Here we are. It is a victory Monday on the Audible. We're getting used to these, John. This is nice. John Kajemi with Kim Bo Camper on another victory Monday, three in a row. And uh, I tell you, it feels pretty good. We're watching. You can watch us here on Twitter. You can send your questions in via Twitter if you're watching on Periscope. Just hashtag the Audible. You can see us on a rebroadcast on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page and on MiamiDolphins.com. But if you want to get your questions in today, and we'll we'll take as many as we can, as I said, via Twitter. Go hashtag the Audible. You will get it in here and we'll go ahead and get your thoughts. But, John, first of all, your thoughts in that football game. First of all, it was a hell of a game, man. It was. Yeah, it was one of those games where, you know, it, it looked like it was going to be a shootout in the beginning of the game. Teams just going up and down the field scoring points. Then all of a sudden, both the defenses seemed to settle in. It became a field goal game. And, you know, you're feeling pretty good about everything. And, and then all of a sudden, one drop punt, Jets take the lead. And you're thinking, oh, my goodness. This is not Here what we, we need. Again. And then about 20 seconds later, Kenyon Drake <laughs> takes it back for the touchdown and, and it's jumping up and down time after that. But, uh, you know, to me, and, and I talked to, we talked after the game and, and with Adam Gaze and, and the different players, you know, I, I think what you're starting to see is, and, and what I like is, and, and I think it was, you know, it was a little snapshot yesterday of the full season, the resiliency of a football team, you know, that's been down. It's been, it's been, been kind of, you know, beat up by people outside the, the organization and, and they just stayed with it, stayed with it, stayed with it, clawed their way back to four and four. And in that football game, they were down early in the game. They stayed with it, just stayed with it, got down late in the game, but continued to come back. And, and I think that's kind of, I think we're starting to see a little bit of that personality in this football team. One game. Okay. Two games, eh. After three games, though, you've got to say this is becoming a, a very, very good pattern you know, it's for this trend. football team. It's yes. becoming a trend. And I think what most importantly, Bo, is you see with this team is they're building trust in one another. Not only the players on the football field, but the front office, the, the head coaches, the way they're coaching these guys. Uh, you know, Vance Joseph on the defensive side, he yeah. wants to be aggressive. They're staying aggressive. They're playing less plays because the offense is yeah. staying on the field, converting third downs, being more productive in the running game. Uh, that offensive line together uh, for consecutive weeks, we see the results of that. Jay Ajayi emerging to one of the best backs yeah. in the National Football League over the last three weeks uh so it's a fun product to watch as a fan it's fun to talk about them because you're winning football games and you're seeing a resilient team find ways to win because that football team doesn't win those types of games over the last three no. four five six years they you know they have a mistake in special teams they drop the snap opposing team would score yep. the offense would come out go three and out and then, and then you'd run yep. out of time and, and you'd lose a heartbreaker yeah, no you lose doubt. a game that you should win and and now you're finding ways to dominate when you're ahead and when you're in tight games making plays on in all three facets to win a game well it, it's, it's as simple as this you know it's a, it's a football team over the last three weeks or the last three games that we've seen this finding ways to win not finding ways to lose football games. Right. And, and look, they certainly had that opportunity yesterday. You know, after the drop fumble, a couple of plays later, you're going for the touchdown. You're down in that football game, down by three at that point in the football game. And, and I'm with you. You know, they're, they're over the last, you know, decade or so, you've seen this team, you know, three and out, punt. They get the football. They're the one that drives it down the field, eats up the clock, game over, and, you're, and you end up scratching your head. Instead, it's just the opposite. You know, you come back. You get the big special teams play. Then you get the ball. You know, you don't do a whole lot. Uh, you, you, you get a couple first downs. You move the ball a little bit. But defensively, they come in. They slam the door right. on it. Sue comes up, makes two big plays, and that drive slams the door on it. And, and I think winning that way was, was good to see. And it's good for this football team because I think this football team now is starting to believe, even when they're down, that, hey, we're not out of this game. We're going to come back. We're going to get the job done. And, and it's a, it's good to see that kind of attitude in that locker room. They're growing confidence yeah. in this team. And, and it's it shows by the way they're playing football. Everybody knows now, when you play the Miami Dolphins, they're a run-first team. Yeah. Well, if we're going to run it, you better be able to play action pass. You better have some tight ends that can get open. You better have running backs that can catch it out of the backfield. And you better have somebody that can go down the field and make a play. And I think that's where this team needs to to evolve to. I like the way they're running the football. I like the way they're being physical at the line of scrimmage, 
But for this team to go from four and four at 500 at the midway port part of their season to go and get to nine and 10 or potentially 11 wins, whatever you that number yeah. is, they have to find a way not only to have the offense, the pass offense go through Jarvis Landry, but Devontae Parker has to emerge. Yes. There has to be other ways to win games, other ways to stay on the field, other ways to sustain drives on that side of the football for this to become a team that's dangerous, for this to become a team yeah. that can score in the 30s with consistency because and, and take possessions away from the yeah. opposing team. You know, We've seen the way our defense can play now in three consecutive weeks Weeks when the play count goes from the 80s down to the yep. 50s and 60s. They're more aggressive. They're, the rotation's better. They're causing turnovers. They're, they're being active in the pocket. They're slowing down the run. They're not is where they want to be against the run right now, yep. but they're, they're getting better at that part of the game. And I think that becomes contagious as a defense. And you would know from the defenses you've played on, once you start building good performance after good performance, yep. That becomes a trend, and and your expectations move from where they were in the beginning of the season at one and four, yeah. now to a, a, a five hundred team, hopefully above five hundred for the remaining eight. The, the other thing I, I like to see, and and I saw this a little bit down on the sidelines watching that football game, as the game progressed. I'm talking about third quarter into the fourth quarter. I saw the defensive line of theirs start to wilt. Yeah. Guys calling, tapping their head. They want to be out of the game. They want to catch some breath, get catch their breath and do so. So that was a an indication to me. And then you saw in the fourth quarter, Jay Ajayi for twenty for twenty yards. Another fourth quarter play where Tannehill hits uh, hits uh, um, Dominique Jones right. uh, for uh, for seventeen yards. And then Ajayi comes out again for another sixteen yards. All fourth quarter plays that kept drives alive, that kept them uh, kept your defense off the field and and, and ate up clock and, and it's good to see and the other thing is I think with Adam Gaze look it was tough running yesterday you know you look at that first half of that game you man you're not going to do these cards goals. but you know what he stayed with it and in the fourth quarter it paid the dividends there are a lot of times that this team or other teams that you've seen would go away from it and not come back to it in the fourth quarter instead try to keep throwing the football I think the ability to stay 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 with that running game throughout the course of the four quarters r- really makes a difference you're watching the audible here Kimbo Camper John Congemi with you you can go ahead if you're watching this on Periscope send your questions via Twitter just hashtag the audible also you can catch us on a rebroadcast on Facebook, the Miami Dolphins Facebook page, and on MiamiDolphins.com. So we're going to get some of your questions. As I said, bring your questions along. We'll get to as many as we can. Roberto, 197969. This is a little bit premature as far as I'm concerned. And believe me, I know a lot about premature. If we win the next two games, Gase, Coach of the Year, eh, I think that's a little too uh, too soon to tell. It's early. But, but I tell you, the good thing about Adam Gase right now is he's getting to learn – and coach his football team and maybe adapting his style yeah. a little bit, you know, trimming some of that yeah. playlist, getting to what the Miami Dolphins do well. And now he can add by subtraction, yeah. you know, getting rid of some of the things that maybe he thought going into the year his team would do well and identifying the things now that they are doing well. Yeah. So, And that's a sign of a very good coach. So if, if the Dolphins continue on this trend, maybe four, five, six weeks from now, that, that question yep. may be relevant. Tommy 101 says, Dolphins won, though. I think our defense needs to be stronger. I think the defense does need to play. I think they certainly need to play better yes. against the run. There, there's no doubt about that. And I think there were a couple plays where they got gashed, where guys kind of went back to their old habits, running around blocks, a little bit of that thing, not being disciplined with their with, with where they're at. If they got a two-gap, stand there, two-gap, and take care of two gaps instead of taking a side. And I think they got gashed for a couple of those runs. And they'll go over that in the tape. That's something they hadn't done in the two previous games right. prior to that so I think that's something that can be fixed but but Tommy it certainly is a concern when you look at that because you know teams are going to until you stop that running game they're going to continue to probe continue to probe continue to look for for different creases in there and, and make things go but uh, I, I'm with you I think they've got to they've got to play a little better they've got to do a little better on that side and and look they got two takeaways in the game but you know, I, I, I still want to see them aggressive after the football a little bit more. There was a few fumbles laying on the ground. That's right. There were two or three laying on the ground. Two by Cam in that, the yeah, that you could have had an opportunity to to come up with. It would have been nice for this football team. And two of those were really gift wrapped by Ryan yeah. Fitzpatrick. I mean, both those interceptions, the athletic play by Phillips, that was really good. Yes. And talking with him today, Bo, it was really uh, a unique scenario. They, I asked him in practice, how did you practice that, getting right. in formation? Because they took Kiko Alonso and moved him into almost a rover position, yeah. what told the quarterback, Fitzpatrick, well, the linebacker's gone. Yeah. I've got my tight end in, in space. Yeah. Well, normally, Adama Kinsu was dropping yeah. in practice. The tight end was opposite 
Phillips, so it meant he was dropping in yeah. coverage. And he had to come across. And he did. He located the tight end as soon yeah. as he got off the line of scrimmage, and then he looked like a, an athlete. Yeah. You know, in space, he grabs the football with the soft hands, hurdles a, a would-be yeah. tackler, goes 17 yards on the return. So a lot of those things, those things build – they build confidence, but they yeah. build excitement and enthusiasm in a defense. I mean, he was carrying seven Dolphins players on his shoulders yeah, no, as he was walking yeah. to the sideline. So, you know, it's one of those big, strong yeah. athletes that, that made a play that turned out to be pivotal. And it's an, you know, now you got another guy you know you can use, a little zone blitz look to him where, you know, someone bails out and the quarterback says, hey, there's the hole right That's there. Right. And then just as he's getting ready to throw, and you can say, yeah, that ball's probably about halfway his hand. He's going, ah! You want to yeah, yeah, pull yeah, that bring bring thing back. back, pull the string back on it. But it, it was a little too late, and, uh, and that was good to see. Hey, John, I want to talk about one thing. So, Jay Ajayi, 111 yards. The Dolphins are against the number one run defense in the National Football League going into that game, rushed for 137 yards. I think that says a lot for that offensive line and Jay Ajayi and Damian Williams, what they were able to do out there. Ryan Tannehill, another game with pedestrian numbers, 12, 17 for 28, 149, one touchdown, no interceptions, 86.8 quarterback rating. And I've said this now for three games. You know, his numbers may look pedestrian, but when you watch him play, I just think he's playing at a whole different level. He's moving around in the pocket more. I think he understands, has got a better feel for the pocket. He, you know, he's avoided some different things, knows when to get the ball. He's had some drops out there, too, that would have, you know, kept right. some drives going. But all I hear today from people is you, is you kind of bounce around the dial and listen to people. Oh, he's just a game manager. He's just a game manager. I, I hate that term, game manager, because I don't care if you're Tom Brady. I don't care if you're Aaron Rodgers. I don't you're care all game who you are. Everybody's a game manager. <laughs> so I, I don't understand what, you know, everyone gets this. This It's, it's like a blanket term to use when you yeah. think, ah, the guy's like, okay, but he's not, you know, they throw game manager. I, I would like to hear some of the, some of their, um, definitions of what they think a game manager is because I think if you put that definition out you go oh that sounds a lot like Tom Brady right oh that sounds a lot like you know Cam Newton that sounds a lot like this Aaron you know, Rodgers Aaron Rodgers I mean hey, to me it's to me it's a it's a kind of a, a slap in the face a little backhand uh, to a guy like Ryan Tannehill and I think it's also a little bit of guys just that, that, that you know they get a cliche and they and they just throw it out there and then that covers everybody up with that I think you're you're a manager of a game when you play the quarterback position, yeah. and it doesn't matter if you're throwing 50 passes yeah. or 28 passes. Yeah. It's just what fits your offense and what's your identity on offense. And I think the Dolphins are closer to finding what their identity yeah. is on offense. And if Ryan can stay between 25 and 35 attempts, get that percentage up, protect yeah. the football, and as you said, Bo, move around the pocket a little bit more, maybe move the pocket on purpose yeah. a couple of times. And, and I think what Ryan needs to do is tuck that football and run a he couple is, of yeah. times just to keep the defense honest. Yeah. Because, one, it keeps them in coverage a little bit longer. But, two, Ryan has that ability. Yeah. We know he can run the football. And I think that will add to staying on the field on third down situations yeah. where there's a you know 50-50 ball you might be able to complete. Take it yourself, get the first down, get down, and stay on the field. Yeah, particularly, I think it was, I don't know if it was Marquise or It was running to his left. He was running to his left, yeah. and, and there was certainly room for him to go, and he tried to fit the ball yeah. in, drop ball there, and put it right in the guy's hands. So so there's right. no doubt about that. But I'm on that that play, I think he definitely could have – could have run for the uh, uh, for the first down. Twitter question: How long can confidence carry a team? Well, I, I think confidence can build. I, I think you know confidence. You know, John, I've always said you know football is not fun. The only thing about football that's fun is winning. winning. That's it. That's the only thing about football that's fun because practice is hard. You know, going to watch those films after a game is hard. You know, off season conditioning is hard. All that stuff's hard. What's fun about football is winning, and. Even more than confidence, I think winning, when you learn to win and you know that's the payday at the end of the game, you become a better football team. And, and, be, and, 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 and for this team, more so than confidence, they're learning their own self as a team and how they go and, and get the job done winning football games. Show me a team that has confidence that's not executing, yeah. you know, that's not yeah. uh, getting it done on in all three phases. And this team is starting to execute with more consistency. That's how you build confidence. That's how you get enthusiasm on the sidelines yeah. when you're performing at a high level. And you look around the league, you know, you look no further than watching the Oakland Raiders play. They're playing with high efficiency. Yeah. They're doing it on both sides of the football. They have playmakers that, that are identified that have to make certain plays throughout yeah. the game, but that team's playing with confidence. You look at Miami play over the last three weeks, they're playing with more enthusiasm, yes, but that's because of the execution. Yep. That's because of the confidence they have in what they're doing, and they're being efficient when they're given their opportunity. So I think when you're consistent 
and you're making plays, that brings you confidence. Yeah, I'm no doubt about it. You're watching The Audible. I'm Kim Bocamper. He's John Congemi. You can go ahead and send your questions in if you're watching via Periscope on Twitter. Just hashtag The Audible. You can watch us on a rebroadcast on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page and on MiamiDolphins.com. All right, uh, let's go here to uh, cool, Cood11. Do we need more wide receivers with Parker Hurt and Stills sick? Well, Stills was – he was ill tomorrow. Stills – or yesterday, Stills will be – I'm not worried about him. Uh, Parker, a little a little different, a little concerned with, with Parker. I don't think we need more receivers out there. You know, they, they've tried you, – they, uh, when, when Stills went out with the illness yesterday, uh, they put Leontay Carew right. in. He got some snaps out there. Didn't really get much going. Uh, Parker, though, I think Parker needs to elevate his game. He, he needs – you know what? Everybody wants him to be a bigger part of this offense. He's the only one that doesn't seem to want to be a bigger part of this offense because if he runs his route better, if he gets himself open better, if he presents himself to the quarterback more, then he's going to get balls thrown his way. He's the only one that can make himself a better wide receiver because I can guarantee you, you know, Ryan Tannehill wants him to be as good as he can be, uh, and everybody on that coaching staff and in that offensive huddle wants him to be the guy. Everyone knows that he can be, and somehow, again, I keep going back to this. His personality is to be is a little bit of a step back, not make waves, introvert. kind of be an intro. He's an introverted guy, and he, and, he, and he plays a lot that way. Well, when you're – I don't know if he's a healthy. I don't know if he's 100% healthy. Now – Everybody, all the indications said that he was going to be healthy for this game. He let it out a few times trying to run, and, yeah. and Darrell Revis and, and the other corner for the Jets. I watched uh, and I had a good view of of not, not getting a whole lot of separation yeah. in routes, not being able to to create Turn space on, yeah. and, and and move past people. And I think that's going to be critical for the offense and play action to take the next step because if you're running it you're running it and you're consistently getting it on the ground where you need to be there's going to be times where you have to take those shots and ryan's getting more efficient at throwing the football over the top of defenses the throw yesterday to williams on the sideline little drop pass i don't think he makes two three four years ago no that was a that was a talented touch pass in a tight window but that ball needs to be thrown on a 50 50 shot to Devontae parker down the field where he's going to come up with that contested catch that makes the offense get those chunk yardage plays where you lose those first downs yep. when you're taking a look at the stat sheet at the end of the day well how the dolphins get down in scoring position well it was a 55 yarder after three jhie runs that put him in field position yep. to get the three yard touchdown run yep. no i tell you the That's other thing you the other thing you look at too and getting beyond the wide receivers in that situation because we talk about it you know, just about every time we do this program, we, we talk about the wide receivers and we talk about Devontae Parker, but that's that's just the way it is. Uh, defensively, uh, Cam Wake just continues to be a beast. You know, when he's not when he's not getting a sack, he had two sacks yesterday, two strip sacks, opportunity to get the fumbles uh, on those situations. He, he's just been a beast out there, and I think the more he plays, the better he plays. And, and, and you know, I, I keep having people going, geez, they're paying Ndamukong Sue a lot of money. Well, Ndamukong Sue is playing as, when, as well as any defensive tackle in the National Football League right now, and, and he has just been doing it on a consistent basis since week one of, of this season. You know, early in the year last year, maybe not quite playing up right. that level, but after game three or four, he turned it he on. Turned it on. <clears throat> And he's been playing it that way ever since. So, so I think they've got two guys out there that uh, when you're, you know, when you're, uh, when you're game planning against the Dolphins, you need to know where 93 is, and you better 91. know where 91 is, and get that going. And you know what, number 50, uh, uh, he's been a lot. Br- yeah, and Branch is good. becoming Andre Branch is becoming one of those guys. You might want to keep an eye over on number 50 over there too. Cam's first step. <laughs> Doesn't look like he had Achilles surgery no, last season. No. His, his toughness, uh, the way he's going after the quarterback, the way he's dipping that shoulder like he always used to, is causing havoc. And it's causing offenses to pay attention, not only, as you said, to where he's lining up and making sure they have good leverage there, but it's making Andre Branch's task and his route to the quarterback yes. much shorter. And when you get push up the middle, and I have to credit uh, Jordan Phillips Jordan, yeah. for playing very well. And that rotation, you got Jones in there. When they get Earl Mitchell back, mm-hmm. there's going to be some, you know, a lot of push and a lot of rotation up front, which keeps those guys fresh. But to your main point there, Cam Wake has been spectacular. He's done everything yeah. I think the Miami Dolphins and Vance Joseph uh, could ask for, for a player that's coming off of injury to slow play it in the preseason to get him to where he needs yeah. to be and and 
kind of gradually take that play count up to where he can be a dominant force, not only for 15 or 20 plays, but for 30 or 40 plays. Yeah, no question about it. Um, let me see. Where are we at here? Uh, Odyssey, Odyssey. O-line has made all the difference. I, I can't argue one bit. Yeah. You, I can talk, you can talk about Jay Ajayi all you want. You can talk about Damian Williams all you want. But those guys are beneficiaries of the five guys up front. And when you've got everyone healthy up there, and I tell you, you watch those guys, and they're, and they're downfield. They're getting to the second level. I mean, they're turning people around, burying guys. That, that, that has been a, a huge, huge difference on this football team. And right now, i, I got to say, they're playing – They've got to be playing as well as any offensive line yeah. in the National Football League. Now, I watched that Raider offensive line last night. They're, they're playing pretty good, but uh, you know they're, they're, they're no better than this, this uh, Dolphin offensive line and what they've been doing. Well, Brandon Albert, uh, we got to talk to him today in the locker room, and he says, you know, you have to give credit to all of these guys because you've got four offensive linemen that can play left tackle, mm -hmm. and, and they're all playing spread out yep. along this offensive line with as arguably as good a center as you're going to get in Mike Pouncey in the middle, and they're playing together. And as you said, Bo, they're getting to the second level. They're, they're not only creating movement on the line of scrimmage, but they're allowing Jay Ajayi, who's a one-cut runner and who gets north and south with quickness, to be able to have that vision to to bounce around. Yeah. Jay looks much more agile because there's more room to run. Yeah. There's not those tight little hallways that he's running through. He's able to get through that hole and get into the second level, and that's where you're getting the explosive running play. And I'll tell you what, there, there, you know, there was a lot of talking going on yesterday. Oh, a lot of talking. started out with Brandon Marshall. You can talk about Brandon Marshall uh, you know, in, uh, out there in, in, in that talk. But at that line of scrimmage, there was a lot of talk, a lot of John going back there all day long. And you know what? As a, as the game went on, you could see the talk, and, and I could see the Jets kind of being the ones to back off a little bit, and the Dolphins continue moving forward uh, in the you know. And, and so you know they, they look, they know they're playing well. They don't mind talking about it. They don't mind throwing it in the face of the team they're playing against. Saying, hey, you want to stop us? Stop us! But uh, but we're going to continue to to just drive this ball down your throat. Well, those are the two teams in the Bills and the Jets. They're the bullies uh, yeah. for the Miami Dolphins. They bullied yeah. this team around for the past three or four seasons, especially the Jets down here uh, at Hard Rock Stadium. Yeah. But yesterday it was a slow, progressive, dominant performance. Methodical, yeah. yeah, by the offensive line, they got it done. They kept hammering away, and finally they broke through, and they broke through for 100 yeah, plus if you, yards. If you don't think they did, if you think they didn't wear those guys down yesterday, it wasn't a caught day out there. No. I mean, but they wore them down by the time that game was over. Um, you're watching the Audible here uh, on on uh, uh, on Periscope. You can send your questions in via Twitter. Just hashtag the Audible. You can catch us on a rebroadcast on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page and on MiamiDolphins.com. El Chapo Jr. Junior, double El Chapo double. Junior, Junior. Gotcha. So we've got a double one in here. Who's the last Dolphin running back to run for over 100 yards in three state straight games? That would be Reggie, Reggie Bush. Bush. Yes, Reggie Bush, last Dolphin to run for uh, 100 yards in three straight games. But Reggie didn't go back to back 200 yards. No, didn't do that. Odyssey artist, what do you think is the key to beating the Bolts? Well, I'll tell you what, they're they're playing better. I think they won two straight, right? Yeah, they and throw it, it around the yard. They throw it around the yard, and they got a big tight end. And let me tell you what, kid from right here at St. Yeah. Thomas Aquinas, Joey Boza has reinvigorated invigorated that football team, and that guy is a one-man wrecking crew oh, uh, so far the way he's played this year. He's going to be tough to hold yes, down for is. four quarters, yes, and, and that's going to be another task. Can you run the football to limit the yeah. amount of times he's going to pin his ears back and go after Ryan Tannehill and company to try to you know slow down yeah. a passing game that's – kind of been built over the last couple of weeks on play action yep. so uh yeah you're right but uh, for me it's philip rivers uh, that is paramount this yes. defense is going to have to play one of their better games not only getting after the quarterback and condensing the throwing uh area for for him yep. who doesn't need a whole lot of throwing yep. area but the back end you have to be able to challenge the football yep. and i think that's where byron maxwell needs to continue to be better at challenging the football and that's where yeah, Tony I'd rather have him play the way he played last night yesterday they they you yes. know you know Brandon Marshall talked about it hey he holds he doesn't you know what go ahead fine if that's the way you're gonna play just play the game that way I don't, what, I don't have a problem with that to your point I, I agree he needs to continue yep. to be aggressive and I think Tony Lippett needs to do the same thing and they have to continually try to mask the loss of Rashad Jones yep. because I, I think over time those guys will get better when they start playing uh, more games with each yep. other 
other, more situations with each other. But I, I think that's something that they have to get through. They have to bridge the next couple of games on the road yeah. in, a, in a more of a hostile environment to be able to come up with some more turnovers. Yeah, well, they got uh, another guy, Bakari Rambo. He's, 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 yeah. he's in the mix now. So now they've got another body in there that they can, can use and, and spread that responsibility uh, out of the way. You're watching the Audible here on, uh, my, on, uh, on Periscope. You can send your questions in via Twitter, hashtag the Audible. Uh, let's go ahead and keep going here. Um, Mr. Sierra missed. If Miami loses anyone in the O-line, can Miami still be as dominant in the run game? Well, look, I, I, don't, I don't feel bad. Like, you know what? In the middle with, with Steen, with um, Keith Urbeck. Yeah. Uh, Urbeck, right? Yeah. I, mean, I keep, I keep him. His name, I always kind of get screwed you up. You got Sam there. Young backing you up at Sam the tackle Young spot. Sam Young on the other tackle. I, I think the Dolphins' offensive line now is better than it was when you had Dallas Thomas and you had uh, Billy Turner in there. It's night and day. They're, they're gone. So now you you brought some other guys, and I just think that they're. I think they're more. I think you have a better chance of this offensive line continue to play consistently the way they're playing if one of these guys get hurt. Now you get two guys hurt, and, and it's a different ball game and you out could, there. That could be any team in the National yeah, Football exactly. League. Exactly. Uh, but look, you've got you know tackles galore in there and, and, and opportunities to move guys around. And you got two tough guys waiting there to step in. That's right. And, and Urbeck and, uh, and, and, Steen. and Steen that uh, they, don't, they don't mind getting in there and mix it up. Um, Roger Kataya, 23, we gave the Jets the business. <laughs> I think they did give the Jets the they business. They did. Always feels good to give somebody the business, Especially right? Especially the Jets or the Bills or the Patriots. <laughs> Anybody in your division, yes. All right, my man, 30D, double D lover. Bo, please talk about what extra focus is required to continue this momentum on the road. That's a concern for me, John. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Double because D, who was that? To, it's 30 double, double D, D lover. That's right, right my man. Nice. He's always always comes in with good stuff, you know. Um, but there, that is a concern for me. Look, the Dolphins are going out on Thursday to play San Diego. You have San Diego on Sunday. You're staying out in San Diego for a week to play the Rams on the next Sunday. I think you, you, there's no other way to do this thing uh, than, 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 than doing it. You're not going to fly all the way back, turn around and come back. It's just too much. But, but that's a concern. Look, it's human nature. You're on the road. You're in San Diego. It's a beautiful place, great weather, all this and everything that San Diego's offering. I know I talked to uh, Cam Wake about it yesterday in the post game. He said, look, you know, we got the same kind of stuff. Yeah, you do. You, but but – it's still something about being away on the road, different environment. Friends are going to come by if you know, for, you know, this and that. So, so there are going to be distractions out there. It's going to be incumbent on this football team to try to keep those distractions as far away, away as they can and keep their mindset the way it's been for the last three football games down here in South Florida. They need to lock in. Yeah. And, and it's a business trip. You always hear people talk about when you go on the road. But this is a different animal because, as you said, Bo, you're going a long way and you're staying for a long time. Yeah. And it's not a normal thing to do. You do this maybe once every five or six yeah. years, maybe not even that frequent. You know, one every once every time in your career you may end up doing this. And I, I think it is important for the Miami Dolphins to somewhat keep the same routine. Uh, somehow stay away from uh, the things, you know, if I'm from California and I want to go see, I want to take you over to my house to eat, or I want to go over and take you to see my friend's place, or I want to do whatever has not been routine for the Miami Dolphins. Now, maybe on a, on a Tuesday or Wednesday, you're still here, but it's the following week when you get done with the first game and and you've got a lot of time on your hands. That's the week that concerns me. That's where you have to really stay true to who you are and what your regimen is as a professional athlete. Yeah, and you need to understand what what you're out there for and and, and what you do. Look, we we, we went out there one time, I think we were 11-0 to start the season and uh, and San Diego was a lousy football team and, you know, we walked away with our tail between our legs in that one. I think a couple guys may have jumped over to Tijuana, (laughs) but whatever. It's close. (laughs) It's close. It's close. It's crazy. Uh, uh, let's go on. At E Hidalgo nine five four, Gase has brought, account- uh, brought accountability to this football team, changing the culture. I, I, I don't disagree with that at all. You know the accountability has clearly been out there from week one in Seattle yeah. when you left Jai home. Now that kind of you know that that kind of set up. the tone right there. And, and then Billy Turner and Dallas Thomas letting go of them when you realize that hey look their upside there is the we've seen their upside and we don't like it so we're going to move on. And I think it's I, I you know no matter what guys say well you know guys see it guys notice it guys understand it and guys believe it and and I do I think he's brought accountability to the team 
culture change. I think that's going to take. Uh, that's like that's like turning an aircraft carrier. Yeah. It's going to take a little while to get that done, but I think he certainly has the right heading as far as that's concerned. What I like about Adam Gase is he's built a relationship with these players on the football yeah. team, and he's not pulled any punches doing it. He lets them know exactly what his expectations are. Mm-hmm. He lets them know where they are in his pecking order. Yeah. And if you're if you're getting it done, great. I expect that from you. If you're not, you're on notice. Yeah. And if you have too many tardies and you have too many excuses and you have too many missed assignments, you know, don't let the door hit you yeah. because we're going to get somebody in here that's going to abide by what we, what our expectations yeah. are as a football team. You know, the Jets, uh, they had two guys that uh, didn't start the game because they, they missed, uh, they've been missed. In practice missed, or meetings. Missed, missed meetings, completely missed meetings or relate to meetings. John, I played for ten years in this league. I was never late no. for any meeting. I, I don't know how guys can do that. I, I don't. It's part of your that job. That to me, I don't understand. You can pay first. Forget the fact you can pay a lot of money. This is your day to day job. Right. You know, you have no place more important to be it's only than, you than to where do. you're supposed. Yeah, that's all you got to do. Show up. And, I always tell you know people always ask me, hey, where, where are you? What hotel are you staying? I don't know. <laughs> all I know is I got to be here at at this eleven time o'clock. The bus is at eleven o'clock. That's when the bus. Is. That's all that's I right. know. That's Everything right. else will play out itself. It's the same. I, I just don't understand it. To me, that that's that's that shows no respect whatsoever. For the rest of your teammates, when you show when you don't show up on time or show up it's at all like for a meeting, it's almost like caddy. Show up, shut up, and, and keep and, up. And just keep up. That's <laughs> just all. Do That's your right. job. Be there when you need to be there. Uh, Twitter is Cam Wake, a future Ring of Honor candidate. Well, I think if he continues to play, and especially if he continue if he ends his career with the Dolphins, I don't I don't think there's any question yeah, about that. I agree. With, I agree with that. I, you know, I, mean, I think his he's, numbers are going yeah. to continue to grow, and I think he's going to continue to thrive this year. Yeah. And look, he comes here from Canada and has been nothing but uh, nothing but a, a class act. Nothing but a, a star in this football team. On so, and off the field. Yeah, I, I think there's, there's no question about that. Uh, what's the tight end situation? Well, I think the tight end situation is not going to change as far as Jordan Cameron. He's on the inner injured reserve, so he's not going to come back. Deion Sims, I actually thought he was going to be back this, this last week because he practiced a couple days. I would assume that he'll probably be ready this week or somewhere along the trip, whether it's not whether it's not the Chargers, um, it's the it, it'll be the Rams. I think it, that's what the case will be. But look, you got Marquise Gray, you got Dominique Jones, who have been been getting valuable reps while those guys have been down. And now you see, hey, look, you got two tight ends here. I'm I'm pretty happy walking in. If your tight end situation now is is going to be Deion Sims, Marquise Gray, and Dominique Jones, I'm they saying, hey, I feel more pretty good. What the Dolphins are doing now, yeah. And this is no shot at, at, at Jordan Cameron. No, right. They fit more now what this team is going to become and the identity of this offense because it's more extension of the line, yep. blocking, motion behind the line of scrimmage, sealing, yep. and getting out and play action, and, and catching contested catches in crowded areas. Yep. These guys have a little bit more of a rounded body, yep. and they cradle the football a little bit better. Yep, and, and especially with the Dolphins going more towards the running game, and that being the you know the, the, the personality of this football team, those are two guys who don't mind sticking their head in there and blocking, yep. and, and they do a good job at it. And look, this is a team that also wants to play three tight, and you get Deion Sims coming back. you got three pretty good blockers in there at, at the tight end position. You can move around, and, and I think that's very important for this uh, for this football team. No question about that. All right, uh, Albert uh, Fluter, the secondary needs to step up. Well, look, I, you know, I think the secondary for where they're at with the injuries they've gone through, and it's it's next man up, and understand we all understand all that thing. But with what this team, with the challenge that this secondary has, has faced. Losing Rashad Jones, losing Xavier Howard, all those things, I, I think they've done a, a very admirable job at that position. And Byron Maxwell, you know, they're, they're, they're testing him, they're coming after him. But he's up there, you know, he's, he, he's challenging, he's fighting, he's doing all those things you want him to see that I don't think he was doing earlier in the season. Well, that's why I think he's his, closed that gap quite a bit. He found himself on the bench yep. when he wasn't doing yep. those things. He needs to play that way to stay on the field, and that's been quite evident, and it's been yep. known to him for the past three or four or five weeks. So I think you've gotten different play yep. out of Maxwell, but as long as you don't see the ball completed going over the head of the Miami Dolphins secondary, yep. they're doing a pretty good job because that time in the pocket has been condensed with this yep. pass rush that's allowing them to play a little bit better. I think Leon's sending questions in now. Look, at Leon... What's he got? L Big, I think he threw a little name change in there for me. Leon, you doing that? Are you doing that stuff? He just wants me to mention his name. He likes me. It might have been Squatch. You know, Squatch. Well, well, we got to talk about late. 
Well, Squatchy. Whoa, whoa. We, what about being late? What, it only took where's Squatchy him, at? It only huh? took him 14 hours to get Squatchy, to the airport yeah, and back today. If the airport, how long is the Fort Lauderdale airport from well, here? Is what, 10 minutes? Yeah, it's a 12 minute drive. Tw- yeah, it took him 12 hours to yeah. take his dad, drop his dad off, and come back. He was back. running around. He said he'd be back here at 1,400 yeah. hours. I don't know. <laughs> Traffic. Traffic was bad. Yeah. Anyway, if it's Leon or not, have we seen the best from this team? Uh, as to me, we've got a lot left to give. I think we've seen this team make a very good progression from week one to where they're at right now. Uh, and, and, I, and I think we'll see better. I think we'll see better out of this football team as you they know, continue to go. Critical two weeks. <clears throat> yeah, because, oh, absolutely. You know, now you only concentrate on the game at hand, but you know you're going to be there yep. for 11 days. And how the Dolphins handle themselves, how they can handle that first yep. game in San Diego with a dangerous uh, veteran quarterback that can throw it all over yep. the football field, and, and how they can just go from – the three games in a row, the yeah. success they've had, and build that into two ro- win- wins on the road, that'll be critical. I know this, John. This team, for this team to be what they want to be, they've got to come back from this road trip 2-0. Yeah, they, they can't drop one of these football games. They just can't do it. And whatever, however you do it, whether you're going to run them over, whether you're going to pass rush them, whether you're going to blitz them, whatever you do, you've got to go ahead and win those games. All right, we'll be back with you on Wednesday. Dolphins head out of town on Thursday for San Diego. Been great being with you. We'll catch you then. Have a good uh, couple days, and uh, we'll talk a little more. I think I'm going to have A.J. Dewey come in on Wednesday. Oh, no yellow cheese. No yellow cheese for A.J. and no mushrooms in his mouth either. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs>